Thank you, Pat. Next, we will hear from Ted Pierce, who will present the Executive Director's Report. Thank you, John. The year of John EDAP was an active one. As John mentioned, there were eight meetings, five regular meetings of the Executive Committee and five special meetings to take care of uh, extra business we had this year. John created three new committees, the Chairman's Committee, which is made up of the Chairman, the Vice Chairman, and the Secretary Treasurer, has now been established to make the quit decisions that don't require the entire vote of the 13-member Executive Committee. There is an ad hoc committee on the Western State Surplus Lines Conference 2012, which was formed by John and his committee, and that will be chaired by Pat Hanley of Socius. And John formed the Information Technology Oversight Committee to aid the uh, Information Technology Committee with their software development projects which are ongoing at the SLA. Fortunately, the, the one that this committee was formed for was completed on December 1st, 2009. That's the Satium contract. We benefited greatly from John's business acumen, his management philosophy. Uh, he's a guy from a lo much larger employer than we typically had as chairman, and uh, it was a unique experience to find out what it's like to work for a, a big company man. John, we appreciated your leadership. Moving on to the export list, Phil Mazur of Sweat and Crawford testified on behalf of the SLA on the, at the uh, December 11, 2009 hearing held once a year by the department to hear uh, the public tell them if they want anything deleted or added to the list. Of course, the export list is the uh, commissioner's list of risks and perils that do not require a diligent search of the admitted market because there is an agreement that there is not an adequate market in the license market for these lines of coverage. Uh, this past year, we had eight requests from the members at large for additions to the list, which were as follows. One, website copyright infringement. Two, first and third party legal liability for computer system breaches. Three, private breach notification costs and credit monitoring. Four, private regulatory action, defense costs and fines. Cost repair damaged information assets. Six, loss of revenue due to failure of security or computer attack, seven, cyber extortion, eight, professional general liability for skilled nursing homes. We learned very recently from the department that none of these requests have been granted this year, but we will be back next year to ask for them again. So you may have seen recently that the, the export list was reissued as is. Moving on to the California Department of Insurance, their bulletin 2009-3 of 2009 created license fee reductions for surplus line brokers. On March 26, the CDI issued this bulletin informing all insurance producers that they are decreasing licensing fees by 6% effective July 1, 2009. This is sort of a gift from Commissioner Poisner. Individual surplus line broker licenses licensees who do not conduct business under their own license saw a reduction in their annual licensing fee from $250 to $235. Individual surplus line broker licensees who do conduct business under their license went from $500 to $470 per year, and the filing fee for adding or deleting an individual broker went from $24 to $23. See SLA Bulletin 1180 for details. Within the SLA, the concept of an electronic or virtual SL2, or diligent search report, was approved by the Department of, in, uh, of Insurance. This is critical that we get an agreement from the department on this so that we can truly go to an electronic filing system. The virtual SL2 will have a couple requirements, and one of them is if the surplus line broker makes any changes or addendums to the way the retail agent has filled out the SL2, there has to be an audit trail showing those changes. They always want to know who completed the SL, SL2, SL2 and who's responsible for the information on that form. In 2009, we hired the consulting services of Mike Cataregli as acting manager of IT for the Surplus Line Association. Mike's background includes senior manager of eBay, who's also uh, in management positions at Anderson Consulting, the Southern Company, and Apple Computer. We welcome Mike to our staff, as, at least as a consultant. We've already benefited from his knowledge. Back at the California Department of Insurance, Woody Gearian's move from Deputy Insurance Commissioner for the Rate Regulation Branch to Deputy Insurance Commissioner for the Financial Surveillance Branch brings Surplus Lines experience 
to this position. Woody is also a former Deputy Insurance Commissioner of the Consumer Services and Market Conduct Branch, also a former Chief of the Financial Analysis Division. Woody brings 30, 33 years of experience to the job and is the only Deputy Commissioner to serve in all three major divisions of the CDI. We're also pleased that Louis Kwan was named Chief of the Financial Analysis Division. I want to recognize the other regulators that are here from the California Department of Insurance Los Angeles office. In the audience, we have Adolfo Cagulata, Jenny Chang, Olivia Escriba, Emma Hershorn, uh, I'm sorry, Emma's not here. Pass that one out. Maria Lubica, David Okamura, Louis Kwan, uh, Virginia Quagino, Mimi Sang, and Shirley Villalon. Could you raise your hands if you're out, if you're from the department here in the audience? Thank you. Okay, the back row. <laughs> Continuing on the theme of California state government, California Assembly Bill 1699, which was passed in 2008, created a new section in the California Insurance Code, Section 1765F. It requires that all surplus line workers involved in surplus line transactions whether licensed as surplus line brokers or not, complete a two-hour training course in California surplus line law and regulation. The two-hour training became available on the SLA homepage on June 2 of 2009. It was vastly improved on December 31, 2009. Completion of the training video results in the issuance of a certificate of completion from the Surplus Line Association. This training certificate must be renewed once every five years. See, Cal see a SLA Bulletin 1181 for details. It's important that just about everyone in this room hold this certificate because if the California Department of Insurance finds themselves in your office, let's say for a, a premium tax audit, they may ask to see these certificates. Moving on to the 2009 legislative uh, year in the California legislature, AB 800 introduced by the former Assemblyman Duval, is the California Insurance Department's cleanup bill, cleaning up the code where it needs to be uh, repaired. Uh, the bill was signed by the governor on October 11th. It's now a uh, statute as of January 1 of this year. The new law is relevant to surplus line brokers in the following ways. One, it establishes a mandatory response owed the CDI when criminal and administrative background questions are required for, right, uh, for license renewal. Two, it requires that license applications and renewals be handled electronically with the CDI via their web page and email. Three, now this is a long one, it requires non-resident organizational licensees to perform their California transactions outside of the state. There's been some blurring of the lines between resident and non-resident brokers. The other alternative for these non-resident brokers is to have a resident individual surplus line broker licensee who is endorsed to their non-resident organizational surplus line broker's license. Four, requires non-resident licensees to name an executive from their entity who is responsible for California regulatory compliance. Five, it exempts non-resident licensees who convert to a California resident license from the fire and casualty license 12-hour uh, pre-licensing education requirement. Moving on to the subject of independent procurement. The figures from the California Board of Equalization on the state's total revenue in 2008, the most recent year that uh, these statistics are available, from the premium taxes on independently procured surplus line policies, these are the, uh, the taxes that are filed with the Form 570 directly to the Franchise Tax Board. The revenue from this, uh, from this independent procurement in 2008 was 7.4 million. The prior year it was 9.3 million. Prior to that it was 12.2 million. Prior to that, 13.2. Prior to that, 18.6. And in 2003, it was 19 million. So there's been a steady decline in the revenue by the state from independent procurement. We can only assume that this is uh, because non-resident surplus line brokers, uh, broker licenses are now available. And the need for independent procurement has gone way down. Moving to the national scene. Multi-state insurance regulatory compliance has been the big issue at the NEIC and in the U.S. Congress. There are 10 states that create a problem for brokers that, uh, have, that produce multi-state policies and have to allocate their, the premium taxes to the other states. 
Illinois, Indiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Nebraska, North Carolina, Ohio, Rhode Island, South Carolina, and Virginia are not allocation states if a large policy is produced in their state and but it's got multi-state, uh, it's a multi-state policy. These states don't believe that they should distribute the remainder of the tax to the other states. They keep the entire tax, making compliance very difficult because those other states may not agree that they should not have received their premium income and will ask for it from the broker possibly. There are seven proposals to solve our various interstate problems in surplus line regulatory compliance and tax allocation. They are as follows. The NEIC, the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, has a new computer program called Opt-in, originally intended as an aid to the taxing authorities in the, in the, uh, in the State Departments of Insurance. Some State Departments of Insurance handle tax, uh, tax collection, premium tax collection. Uh, but this product can also be used by brokers to help them comply with the state laws. There's also something called the M-Form. It's a streamlined document for the tax allocation and regulatory compliance on multi-state policies drafted by our general counsel's law firm, Dewey LaBeouf. There's an Excel spreadsheet being worked on by the NEIC multi-state tax working group in which they are trying to include every rule associated with trying to uh, abide by the 50 state rules. That does not show much promise. Marsh and McLennan or Marsh USA has a program that they use internally to comply with the 50 state rules on multi-state surplus line policies. They've offered this program to the NEIC uh, they didn't accept it for some reason. Marsh has explained that to make this program work, and it doesn't work perfectly well because the law, the state laws conflict, uh, there are over 200,000 rules in this program. The NEIC state-by-state -state comparison surveys, the NEIC is asking the states, how do you collect taxes? How does it work in your state? And they plan to create a compendium of all state rules as explained by the regulators. Of course, the U.S. Congress passed the uh, not admitted in Reinsurance Reform Act. When I say the U.S. Congress, I'm talking about the House Chamber. Passed it twice last year, once as a standalone bill and once as part of the omnibus uh, Wall Street Reform Bill, uh, H.R. 4173. But there was no response in the Senate, so we still don't have a law. The final seventh item is Slim Pack. This is a multi-state compact in which the state legislatures would have to pass a law saying we all agree to give up some sovereignty to some independent clearinghouse that will make the decision for brokers as to who they owe taxes to on a multi-state policy. That is a bit of a long shot right now. It is very dependent on the passage of the Non-Admitted and Reinsurance Reform Act, which tells the states that they should form a compact, but it can't force them. Washington, D.C.'s effort to regulate insurance in general. The U.S. Representative Paul Konjorski, a very important subcommittee within the House, the U.S. House Financial Services Committee, held a hearing in the spring of 2009. The title of the hearing was, How Should the Federal Government Oversee Insurance? And uh, Chairman Konjorski proudly proclaimed that the AIG government bailout serves as proof that insurance should be regulated at the federal level. The remainder of the year, the insurance industry had to fight the assumption that the AIG bailout had something to do with uh, AIG's insurance companies, which of course it didn't. And that slowed down the progress of insurance, uh, of federal standards legislation in Washington, D.C. The lobbyist for NAPSLO, Maria Bertou, said at the beginning of last year that Congress is more divided along party lines than the previous Congress. Well, that turned out to be the understatement of the year. <laughs> One of the main reasons we can't get a large insurance bill out of Congress is because of these divisions. 2009, we had, of course, a release of the 17th or so uh, in a row, AM Best Special Report on Surplus Lines, uh, commissioned by NAPSLO. The report said as follows, overall, this is for the year 2008, the most current year that these statistics are available, surplus lines insurers remain well capitalized, manage the market cycle adequately, and maintain conservative balance sheet strength. In 2008, the surplus lines direct premium written declined by the largest percentage since 1988. Combined ratio rose due to weather-related losses on natural catastrophe exposed business. Favorable, favorable reserve development reduced the combined ratio by 10.7 points. Total investment losses of 161.3 million were generated off from the 2.38 billion total gain in 2007. Finally, 2008 policyholder surplus declined for the first time since 2001. Now for a small housekeeping matter, 
The election of the SLA officers will continue by email after the annual meeting as we did not achieve a quorum at these meetings. Under the SLA Constitution, 370 licensees are eligible to vote, approximately 12% of the 4,342 licenses. We need one-third, or 124 of these licenses, to cast their vote in favor of the slate to achieve a constitutional majority and thus elect our officers and executive committee members. The ele uh, electronic ballots will be sent shortly after the this meeting, and uh, for those of you who receive them, we hope you respond promptly. In conclusion, I want to thank my managers at the Surplus Line Association for a great year of achievement. Joy Irvin heads the stamping office as director and serves as, a, as the chief operating officer, responsible for overseeing operating departments, the administrative functions, and finance, which includes accounting, payroll, purchasing, banking, and financial investments. Joy prepares and presents the annual budget, quarterly financial statements, and interfaces with our outside auditors for the annual financial audit. Linda Chang is the manager of our financial department. Linda coordinates the Surplus Line Association participation in the security, excuse me, the security review program for the Department of Insurance or Commissioner's list of eligible surplus line insurers. Linda represents the SLA at monthly meetings with the California Department and provides input on SLA compliance with the CDI slash SLA agreement or plan of operation. Pat McCauley whose name is followed by the following acronym, CPCU, ASLI, is our Manager of Data Processing. Pat is responsible for receiving, processing, recording, and storing the required filings under California Insurance Code uh, Section 1780.56 at Al, and is responsible for invoicing and collecting stamping fees from the brokers for document processing in accordance with the same section of law. Vienna Murray is our Education Manager. Vienna provides guidance, education, support to the association membership and affiliates in the understanding of current surplus line laws, regulations, and procedures. Vienna develops and provides continuing education courses throughout the state of California. Vienna works closely with various branches of the California Department of Insurance. All of these managers, including our acting IT manager, Mike Cataregli, are dedicated, hardworking individuals who make the SLA run. I thank them for a great year and a great operating year for the Surplus Line Association. Thank you very much.